shifting fortunes for the Republican candidates in that same poll. Donald Trump pulling further ahead now with 28 percent on top of the heap. That's up from 20 percent in July. Ben Carson second with 12 percent. Three-way tie for third. Jeb Bush, Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio, 7 percent. Moving into the top 10, Carly Fiorina with 5 percent. Rounding out the field, Rand Paul, 2 percent. Rick Santorum, Rick Perry tied at 1 percent. And now I guess we're not even going to go on to the other ones because they're below. Tony Sayeg, Republican strategist, Bernard Whitman, former Bill Clinton pollster and CEO of Whitman Insight Strategies, are here to debate all of this. Okay, who is surprised? Raise your hand <laughs> if you're surprised that Trump has gone from 20 to 28 percent. Look, Donald Trump. Come on, is where are the hands? Who's is anyone surprised? I'm half surprised. Half surprised. Well, okay. so, surprised depending on when you're measuring it from. I'm surprised if you say from the day he announced to now. Sure, we're all surprised. But it, watching this race and the way it's evolved throughout the summer, and seeing how people have responded to Donald Trump, his bluntness, his candor, it's not really a surprise because if you look at that poll and you count in Ben Carson and Carly Fiorini, you have the non-politicians, the non-structural, generic political candidates, almost getting 50 percent of the vote out of a field. 17 candidates. Yep. And that's because they're the ones who are inspiring the imagination and giving the Republican primary voters something to be hopeful about. And the generic structural guys, they're kind of all clustered together because they're talking off that same old playbook that's not inspiring okay, voters. Why were you half surprised? Uh, well, I was half surprised because I figured Donald Trump would uh, not really rise much above 20 percent. You know, Tony can try to spin this as much as he wants, but this serves as a disaster call for the Republican Party. Here's why. Donald Trump has more votes uh, than the top three combined. Yeah. So he is well on his way to potentially winning the Republican nomination. Why is that a disaster? Here's the problem. Uh, he, ha he is completely underwater on favorability. He has an unfavorable rating of 54%. Every single demographic group is more negative towards him than positive towards him. Well, Hillary He's does too. Women. So, so what, if it, what, if it's, what if it's unfavorable Trump Hillary, against Hillary unfavorable is beating, Clinton? Hillary yeah. is beating Donald Trump handily. What about unfavorables? Uh, I, Donald Trump's unfavorable rating at 54 is higher than Hillary. And, and trustworthiness, and we just saw Hillary is at 61% of Americans who don't trust her. Hillary has a, a lot of serious deficits. That's why you see the draft Biden movement getting so much attention. Yeah. But, but the thing says, is, but hold on, hold on, hold on but Bernard, you says, know well enough, excuse me, hold on. You know well enough as a pollster that polls today do not indicate who people are going to be voting but, for but you know in the, January you know and February. What the polls do True. say? The polls show just how out of step the Republican establishment is with the Republican base because the Republican Republican base wants someone that's a firebrand like a Donald Trump or a Ben Carson. They've rejected establishment candidates like Bush. They've rejected Tea Party zealots like Rand Paul and Ted Cruz. Well, no They've rejected, rejected okay. social nobody's, conservatives no, like, like no, Huckabee and Santorum. They are completely <laughs> out of step with what okay. the Republican voters Let's, want. I want to get deeper into these polls because that's sometimes where you find the most interesting nuggets. So in that same Quinnipiac poll, the voters were also asked for a single word describing each of the three leading candidates, creating a word cloud. Top word for Hillary Clinton, liar, followed by dishonest, untrustworthy, and then experience. Okay, asked about Jeb Bush, guess what they said? Bush. <laughs> and then family, honest, weak. As for Donald Trump, they call him number one, arrogant, blowhard, an idiot, and then a businessman. Okay, Hillary Clinton, first word, liar. What that is showing is that in each one of these uh, polls, it's basically the negatives are coming out. The opposition, we all know a lot of people are opposed to Hillary Clinton, so you're going to see those negatives rise. The same is true for Donald Trump. The same is true for George Bush. What is not mentioned uh, Jeb earlier Bush, is that, uh, yeah, uh, Jeb Bush. What's not mentioned is Hillary Clinton also was recognized for being experienced and for being strong. These are exactly the type of qualities that the voters want and respect. Yeah, well, okay, you can say, say th same thing. Fourth on the list for Trump was businessman. Three. Everyone knows he's a business. Three out of the four words used to describe Hillary were some form of the word liar or dishonest or untrustworthy. Hillary's other problem, and we see this in focus groups all across America, Gretchen, where we're going out there, is she's not relatable and she's not likable. People thought Bill Clinton was dishonest, but they liked him and they related to him and they thought more importantly he cared about people like them. Okay. Hillary only got 30 percent in the poll of people saying she cares about people like them. That's which, a bigger which, problem, know, which is why you have Bernie comment. Sanders. You know, think, you know what I think we're going to see a lot more of going forward is Hillary Clinton speaking in terms of the values that she holds dear about opportunity, about equality, about respect for human dignity, about getting this kind of economy moving again. She has to connect with the voters based on shared values. I think we're going to see a lot more of that. Hollow of words if people don't trust her, Bernard. All right, guys, thanks very much. Very interesting.